So thank you everyone for coming. Um, my name is Taylor Sandoval Mendoza and I am the Assistant Director for Leadership in Greek Life um, in our Center for Student Development. And so this is the power of the sorority impact. Um, it's honoring Women's History Month and just highlighting um, all of the great things that sorority women have done throughout the um, throughout our history. Um, and just to give you some historical context, we haven't really done an event or anything like this before. Um, so I hope you guys learned something new about a chapter maybe you didn't know about um, or just in more about sororities in general. So I'm gonna pass it off to Ama Amba um, and I will let her uh, introduce herself and we'll get started. Hi, my name is Ama Amba and I'm the graduate assistant for Greek life at Texas Women University. Um, so yes, we're going to go ahead and get started with our first part of the presentation, which will go over the history of sororities. Um, the North American fraternity and sorority system began with students who wanted to meet secretly, usually for discussions and debate purposes that were not thought appropriate by the faculty of their, of their school. Sororities are a major part of college life for many American students. Sororities provide a home, activities, events, and a sense of community to young girls during their college years. They can also provide young women with great social circle, as well as academic leadership and career opportunities. The idea began in 1851 with the formation of the Alpha Delta Pi, previously known as the Adelphian Society, Though fraternity-like organizations for women did not take place in their current form until the establishment of Pi Beta Phi in 1867 and Kappa Alpha Theta in 1870. Um, it is the first women's organization to be called a sorority that came later in 1882. This organization was Gamma Phi Beta Women's in Syracuse University and they began to call themselves a sorority. It was a suggestion of their advisor, the professor of the Latin, who thought that the word was better suited for them. The word sorority comes from the Latin word meaning soror, which means sister. Prior to this, earlier sororities were called female or women's fraternities. Starting in the early 20th century, African-American students formed their own Greek fraternities and sororities to foster communal bonds and increase professional opportunities after collegiate careers, but also to provide community service to the African-American community. The establishment of the historically Black fraternity organizations has been documented to have happened as a result of the lack of support and representation that was there to ensure success for African-Americans entering college and universities. This emergence and growth due to the part of success of the civil rights movement and brought forth newfound strength in minority populations. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is the first black sorority that was found on the campus of Howard University on January 15, 1908, following the establishment of the first black fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated in 1906. While organizations were being formed that strengthened culture and pride among specific groups, there were students coming from multicultural and multi-ethnic backgrounds, households, schools, and neighborhoods who often felt that they weren't able to identify with any of the cultures or sororities or fraternities that were on campus. They felt that they needed to belong to an organization that not only embraced and highlighted their own culture, but also valued the qualities and richness of other cultures shared by their families and friends. It was until then that the climate of the multicultural fraternity organizations were born, demonstrating the richness and the cultural blend of the American culture and the need to celebrate and embrace the, different, the differences. Mu Sigma Upsilon Sorority was the first multicultural organization that was founded in November 21st in 1981 and was the first multicultural sorority in our nation. Next slide, please. We do have a total of four different councils. The first council was the IFC, which is the Interfraternal Council, and it serves to advocate the needs of the members of fraternities through enrichment of fraternity experience, advancement, and the growth of the fraternity 
community. The enhancement of the education mission of the host institutions. Currently, TWU has one IFC, which is an all-male fraternity on campus. And the formal organization was completed in 1910. And today there are about 350,000 undergraduate members nationally in the IFC Council. PC, or the National Panhellenic Conference at TWU includes women's fraternal organizations recognized nationally by the National Panhellenic Conference. Founded in 1902, NPC is the national governing body for 26 women's fraternities and sororities. Texas Women's currently recognizes three national organizations. Now, in today's society, we have about 375,000 undergraduate members nationally in the PC. The National Panhellenic Council was founded at Howard University in 1930 to provide a venue of cooperation and communication concerning issues of mutual interest for Black Greek letter organizations. The TWU NPHC serves as the official coordinating agent for a campus and NPHC organizations, and they are nationally here to promote programs and unity on TWU's campus. Texas Women's University currently recognizes one man's fraternity and three women's sororities. Nationally, NPHC holds 1.5 million individuals around the world. And that doesn't include undergraduate students, but also graduates as well. And the Multicultural Greek Council is a governing council for all cultural and multicultural fraternities and sororities recognized by the Greek system at Texas Women's University. TWU currently recognizes three multicultural sororities and one Latino fraternity. In 1998, the National Society of Latino Fraternal Organizations emerged, united the Latino fraternal community. The members of the Multicultural Fraternal Organization realized that for similar efforts that they needed to band together. With 13 multicultural organizations present, this meeting initiated the formation of the National Multicultural Greek Council. Next slide, please. And now we're going to move this along to the ladies of Alpha Gamma Delta sorority. Hi. Let's say real quick, sorry, Hannah. We're gonna start, um, basically we're gonna go alphabetical order for the sororities that we have on our campus. And they're gonna talk about their historical overview for their chapters, um, and then some chapter context and how they've made an impact um, at TWU and in our local communities. So take it away, Hannah. <laughs> Um, I'm dog sitting and they get kind of crazy. So if y'all hear them, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why we're outside. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I am a part of Alpha Gamma Delta. I'm actually our president. Um, so you can go to the next slide, Kaylee. Thank you. So our overall history, um, Alpha Gamma Delta was founded in 1904 at Syracuse University, uh, which is in Syracuse, New York. And we are an international women's fraternity, um, and we have over 175 uh, chapters, not only in the United States, but also in Canada. And our organization is on academic support, philanthropic, giving opportunities, um, such as Meals on Wheels, America. Um, there's also a large emphasis on leadership and um, instilling leadership qualities in our women, as well as personal development. Um, like I previously mentioned, we support Meals on Wheels, uh, which helps raise money to help fight world hunger. And it is an expectation in our organization that we continually work to leave a mark on our community on behalf of Alpha Gamma Delta. So we have countless opportunities to volunteer within our community um, that are based off of the foundation that Alpha Gamma Delta started. And we create events that empower our women to go out into the community and serve others. You can go to the next slide. So a couple of impactful alumni that we have, um, Miss Betty White, she 
is an influential American actress. Most people know who Betty White is, um, but she's also an advocate for animal rights and welfare. Um, she uses her platform to fight for animal rights. Um, and that's one of her big philanthropic focuses. And then we have Margaret Moffat Toy, and she is actually the woman who brought Meals on Wheels to America. Um, and she used her platform in order to find a way to help those that are less fortunate and lessen the amount of those who were going hungry, including men, women, and children in the United States. So the Epsilon Phi chapter of Alpha Gamma Delta, um, when we were founded, it was the mission of our, so oh, sorry, it just got really windy. Um, it was the mission of our international president to implement the values of AGD across the nation. Um, the founding members of Epsilon Phi built our chapter off of those values of sisterhood and philanthropic efforts. Um, and we continue to hold ourselves to that higher standard today. Um, so since Epsilon Phi has been implemented at Texas Women's University, uh, those values have been passed down to each girl that is a part of our chapter and we continue to pass those values down today. So for community impact, um, Epsilon Phi is heavily involved with North Texas Food Bank, um, Feeding America, Meals on Wheels um, across the DFW area, not just specifically in Denton, um, because we do have sisters that live all across DFW. And so as an organization, it is a requirement that our members complete at least five community service hours with three of those being hunger related. But we also encourage them to be as involved in their volunteer projects as they can. So even once they hit those five hours, we encourage them to keep volunteering and not just doing it to meet a requirement, but to do it as a way to contribute to our communities. Um, recently, we held a week-long walkathon in order to raise money for the Alpha Gamma Delta Foundation. And this foundation, um, focuses on giving back to sisters specifically. So like through um, creating scholarships for them and so on and so forth. Um, and we were able to reach our goal within the first two days of this um, event, both financially and uh, steps wise. So that was really exciting. Um, and we're hoping to do that again in the future. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. So I think Alma, you wanna? Yes, so I'll be presenting on behalf of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Next slide, please. Okay, so the history of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, um, AKA is an organization that was founded on the University of Howard, Howard University in Washington, D.C. in 1908. And um, we were founded by um, Ethel Hedgeman Lyle and a group of other sisters who were there at the time. Um, the organization became recognized group and official um, organization and continued to make an impact as the first Black African, um, Black and African American sorority. Um, Later in February of 1908, um, seven sophomores were admitted and those sophomores helped to um, make Alpha Kappa Alpha an incorporated organization. The small group of women who founded Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority at the turn of the last century were, were conscious of their privilege um, position as college trained women of color, just one generation removed from slavery. So we strive to do well in everything that we do since we are the first organization and we strive to have service to all mankind. Next slide, please. Okay, so women's history highlights. Um, the women listed underneath in these pictures are highlighted because they have a great contribution to our society. Um, the first woman that we see here is Kamala Harris, which is the first female black 
um, first female and first black vice president of the United States. Um, the second woman that we have here is the first female and first black CEO of Walgreens and is currently the only black CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Um, the third woman that we have listed below is the first black woman in space launch and the first independent black owned woman owned publishing company. And the fourth lady that we have here is the first black woman to be appointed the chief of staff at a national security agency. And she's the fourth highest ranking member of the agency. Um, CAP, a new chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sword Incorporated was chartered on TW's campus on April 3rd, 1976 by the Tenacious 12. Um, those are the 12 women who had the idea to bring Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority onto TW's campus. Our um, sorority impact. So Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority's development has been influential not only by the growth of its members in size, and maturity, but also by conditions in the culture. Um, we strive to be of service to all mankind. And so we focus on that. And the Cap and New chapter has made it our duty to impact the community in the DFW area since 1976. Um, Alpha Kappa Alpha has five philanthropies that consist of actively educating people about HBCUs and donating to them to help raise money to better serve their community. We host women's health and wellness events. We focus on building an economic legacy. We celebrate the arts and then we participate in global impact awareness. Um, the Kappa New chapter is also all about service and typically hosts and participates in about eight to 10 service projects annually. Kappa New strives and continues to strive to be of high ethical standards in addition to continuing to be of service to all mankind. All right, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> my name is, okay, my name is Caitlin Terry and I'm the philanthropy chairman for um, Alpha Omicron Pi at the Delta Theta chapter. Um, and Taylor, if we want to start on the next slide. All right, Alpha Omicron Pi is an international women's fraternity founded on January 7th, 2nd, 1897 at Bernard College in New York. Bernard College was one of the first in the nation to allow women the opportunity to receive the same rigorous and challenging education that was offered to men. Our founders, Stella George Stern Perry, Jesse Wallace Hewen, Helen St. Clair Mullen and Elizabeth Haywood Wayman were four friends determined to make their friendship last a lifetime. On December 23rd of 1896, the four pledged to each other in a small room in the library, formally organizing AOPI in the home of Helen St. Clair on January 2nd. Soon afterwards, they pledged their first initiate. We are founded on the ideals of character, dignity, scholarship, and college loyalty. AOPI has over 190,000 initiated members, 145 currently installed collegiate chap chapters with 164 active alumna chapters across the United States and Canada. Um, I would like to introduce you to a special alumna in AOPI history, Carol Jones. Until 2019, the National Panhellenic Conference had a rotation system for their officers. With many Panhellenic organizations moving towards a governance board model, it was proposed that NPC do the same. Carol Jones, past international president of AOPI, is the first elected chairman of NPC. Carol was one of the collegiate members who traveled by bus from the University of Alabama to TWU to conduct the colonization rush. She worked to help recruit the first group of AOPI members in the Delta Theta chapter here at TWU. Next, I would like to introduce you to one of our very own alumni from the Delta Theta chapter, Dr. Michelle Lopez. Dr. Lopez is originally from Fort Worth, Texas. She earned a Bachelor of Sciences in Government with a minor in Spanish from TWU. She also received a Master of Education in Counseling and Guidance with an emphasis in College Student Affairs from Texas State University and her PhD in Education Administration from Texas A&M. After graduation, Michelle became an educational leadership consultant for AOPI. Michelle's professional career included many different roles within higher education over the past 20 years. In 2016, she formed her own coaching and consulting company, NextGen Latinos. 
As an active volunteer within her community, Dr. Lopez has served in a variety of leadership roles with organizations such as the United Ways of Hayes County, Kyle Area Chamber of Commerce, the Hayes Educational Foundation and Kyle City Council with two years as mayor pro term. She also serves on the Hayes CISD Board of Trustees. Presently, her activities include volunteering as a lecturer as, at St. Anthony Marie de Claret Catholic Church, volunteering at her son's cap, uh, school and serving as secretary of the Board of Directors for the Alpha Omicron Pi Foundation. The Alpha Delta chapter played a critical role in the formation of Delta Theta. Alpha Delta's rush team drove the long drive from Tuscaloosa to Dallas and were treated to an incredibly warm welcome from Dallas alums. Together, they worked hard day and night, moving furniture, singing songs, and making everything perfect for the recruitment process. When the rushes arrived, everything had fallen into place. The hard work surely paid off, and 25 women pledged to join Alpha Omicron Pi at Texas Women's University in September of 1983. The pledging ceremony was performed by the fraternity's international president at the time, Ginger Banks. February 11th of 1984, Delta Theta was officially a charter chapter of Alpha Omicron Pi. And this is a chapter of our Delta Theta Pledge class of 1983. Um, 744 members have been initiated into Delta Theta over the years. AOPI's main philanthropy is the Arthritis Foundation and our local philanthropy is Sisters for Soldiers. Delta Theta has worked with many local Denton restaurants and boutiques to make donations to the Arthritis Foundation, frequently involved with UNT and TWU Greek Life and other philanthropy opportunities. For years, Delta Theta has visited nursing homes, local public gardens, and began working with Keep Denton Beautiful. Our chapter works hard to keep service at the front of our hearts and minds as we try to portray it through everything we do. We are glad you were able to get a little glimpse of what Alpha Omicron Pi is all about. We strive to inspire ambition in everything we do, and that's the heart of being an AOPI. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Mariana Floran. I am one of the potential candidates of Lama Theta Alpha Light Authority Incorporated. Um, and I am a senior here, and I'm looking forward to presenting a little bit about um, our sorority. So it was established on December of 1925 at King's University in New Jersey. It is the first Light Authority founded with 17 lovely mothers. Um, there are currently 173 undergraduate chapters across the country with five groups in the establishing process like TWU um, and 28 alumni chapters. So the purpose of um, LTA is to provide a sisterhood based on unity, love and respect and efforts to foster um, development of strong leaders who eventually advocate and practice political, social and cultural activities. Um, the emergence of independent Latina women who are eager to be at the forefront of an era of the new educational, political and social consciousness. Our uh, model is Latin by tradition, not by definition, and it's a non-exclusionary sorority open to all ethnicities and backgrounds. The women who join LTA today um, still feel the need to promote those same values across the campus. And you can go to the next slide. Um, so just like Sisters Making a Difference, um, this is Stephanie Crespo. She is from the Beta Gamma chapter at the University of South Florida. Um, with the Black Lives Matter protests and the other civil rights movements, Stephanie went to the ones in her area and also traveled to other states to work as a legal observer. So a legal observer is pretty much someone who ensures um, that the protesters were allowed to safely exercise their First Amendment rights. Um, Stephanie is an immigration attorney, attorney uh, licensed to practice in Florida, but also represents clients across the country. And you can go to the next slide. Um, the beginning of our history. So this is Ophelia Oviendo, uh, the current national advisor and one of the founding mothers. So without Ophelia and our other 16 women who decided to go against the expectations of Latin women, there would be no LTA today. We would not be in the position we are in today to have Lama ladies across the country 
define what it means to be a Lambda lady and making our own historical moment. Um, then we have Iris Rodriguez Leon, and um, she's the current national advisor to the board of directors and a part of the Alpha chapters first line. Um, the first line did not become official until the fall of 1979. Uh, without the dedication of Iris and the other three Alpha line members, LTA would have ended um, with the founding mother. So she is also someone who, without her dedication and love for LTA, um, there will be there will not be a national uh, presence felt. Um, to this day, um, they're still um, participating actively in LTA and guiding us into the proper direction so we're able to thrive as an organization. So um, here at TWU, um, we're making also history with the PCs. Um, officially, I was established as a group in spring of 2018, but the process began in fall of 2017. Um, since the origin of the PC group um, here at TWU, we had a little bit more than 65 girls participating in the process of becoming an official chapter. Every year we're host um, and or participate in a tour drive around Christmas. Um, the first organization philanthropy of St. Jude at PCs prior to COVID-19, we would help the local chapters with their 5K walk slash run organization and running the event throughout the day. All of our current members and past are part of other organizations that include Honor Society, Leadership Councils, and even um, being employed at um, our university. And um, through what we are able to do is very limited compared to other organizations, the PC group embodies a never give up attitude. And we know that one day we will, we will be able to call ourselves the founding line of LTA at PW. And that's it for us, thank you. Thank you, Mariana. I saw Tyree, I thought, no, okay. Um, then I will present, oh, I will present for them. So um, this is gonna be some information about Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Um, okay, so Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated was founded November 12th in 1922 on the campus of Butler University in Indianapolis, Indiana by seven educators. Pictures on the slide. Um, women in Sigma. So some of the women who have been really impactful, MC Light. Um, she is the first African-American female DJ to perform in Carnegie Hall. And then Hattie McDaniel was the first African-American actress to win an Oscar. Picture there on your screen. So the Elite Ada New chapter here at Texas Women's University. Um, they became official chapter April 16th, um, 1979 at TWU. Um, these were the founding soror sorors um, who founded and they were the first line for um, Sigma Gamma Rho. So their chapter has made actually a lot of impact. Um, they have interest meetings for anyone who is interested in joining. So be on the lookout for those on their social media accounts when they have them. Um, they participate in the St. Jude walks or runs throughout the DFW area. They host voter registration drives. Um, they celebrate the Founders Day, um, which typically they also do some sort of philanthropic um, drive of some sort for that um, during Founders Day or their weeks. They, they have social injustice events. So they host um, screenings at least this past few years of the Sandra Bland um, documentary. And then they have a conversations around it with everybody who, who is present. They have health and wellness education. They foster campus social efforts and camaraderie. Um, they attend other organizations, events, um, and then they have per personal um, leadership and professional development um, within and across their chapter and with their graduate chapter. And I can't read the last, oh, uh, yes, development workshops. So they work closely with their alumni um, who also really put a lot of effort in to help the chapter um, and the women grow and develop um, within the organization. Yeah, that's a little bit about SG Row. Hello, my name is Jessica Torres, and I am the social chairwoman and also the campus activities chairwoman for Sigma Lambda Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Taylor, can you please, um, thank you. Okay, a little bit of our history is we were founded October 20th, 1998 at Texas Women's University. And 
we also have other chapters in Texas and in Oklahoma, and we're still expanding as well. The mission statement of Sigma Lambda Alpha is to promote the importance of community service involvement and academic achievement, as well as to educate and excel the stance of the Latino cultures in this diversely enriched society. Our pillars are community service, academic achievement, cultural awareness, sisterhood, and we also have a philanthropy, which is the Boys and Girls Club of America. Okay. And then along with impact, first we have Crystal Retena. She is uh, currently a Farmers Branch Council member. She's constantly helping and giving back to the community. She's the second Latina to be elected to their council. And then Angeles Gonzalez, she is one of our founding mothers, but she's um, also given a lot of contribution towards our sorority and our community. And then we have Ana Casaneda. She's our beta chapter sister. She has given so much to the community. She's a member of the Under the Bridge Ministries. Her and her husband are out every weekend in Fort Worth, Texas, helping feed the community and helping give resources to those who are homeless. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Okay, and then we are the Almighty Alpha Chapter, which means that we were founded here at Texas Women's University on October 20th, 1998. Uh, the first class was inducted in spring of 1993, and our colors are burgundy, forest green, and gold. As a sister of Sigma Lambda Alpha, you do get to experience both the sisterhood, but also the professionalism that is involved in this organization. So you get to experience all the lovely activities that we have, such as Galavention and the summer. And we do a lot of developmental activities, but we also folk like developmental activities on the professionalism side, but we also focus on bonding, which just not, not just the alpha chapter, but with all of our chapters. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Okay, for impact, our motto is Latinas helping others. And as I mentioned previously, our philanthropy is the Boys and Girls Club of America. We do service projects. We're currently and every year for the past six years, we have been hosting our Burgundy Bag Project uh, this year this year, our Burgundy Bag project is uh, tailored to helping tailored to helping those um, in need, and we're partnering up with Ana Casaneda to help um, feed the homeless. And here, we see some pictures of some of the activities that our sisters have done. On our bottom left-hand corner, we have the sisters creating busy books for the children's hospitals, so we could um, donate the books. The busy books to children who are just um, in the hospital need something to do. And then we have in the middle, we have um, our president, Sonia Rocha, where we held a drive and then we donated those to a church and those went to the homeless as well. And then we just have different activities where we participated in socials and Greek socials and sister socials. And on campus events, we also have cultural awareness, informationals, and sister, and we talk about sisterhood. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so SLG also couldn't be here today, so I'm gonna present for them as well. So um, I'm gonna be presenting about the Sigma Lambda Gamma National Sorority Incorporated. And they actually also had really cute slides that had like things that moved, but PowerPoint, when we converted it, it doesn't move. So, um, so um, about SLG as um, a national organization. So they were founded April 9th in 1990 at the University of Iowa. They're Latinx based, but now they are um, have a multicultural membership. Uh, their principles are academic, social interactions, cultural awareness, community service, and moral and ethics. Their motto is culture is pride and pride is success. Their philanthropies are um, breast cancer awareness, TRIO programs, and partnerships with Red Heart Association. So some of their sisters um, who've made an impact, 
Um, there's Jessica Cisneros. She is an immigration and human rights attorney and proud um, Mexican American woman running for Congress in Texas's 28th district to fight for working families. She was born and raised in the border town of Laredo, Texas, and has both her undergraduate and law degrees from the University of Texas. During her career, she specialized in representing people in immigration court as they face deportation proceedings while, de while detained. South Texas needs a champion in Congress, and she ran uh, to be a true democratic leader for her co community. And the other sister they'd like to highlight is Shanice. She's an educator and successful author. Based out of Atlanta, Shanice wrote the children's book, Black, Girl, Black Girls Make Magic, a story of a young girl destiny who uses affirmations and positivity to overcome life obstacles. A powerful story of self-love for readers ages six to 11. Um, Shanice's book will continue to inspire the lives of young children. So check out the book. Um, about their chapter. So they were established um, at TWU January 12th, 2010. They've had 129 initiated sisters in their chapter, with a large alumni network. Um, they have 10 plus different nationalities and various ethnicities among their chapters, sisters, including Egyptian, Vietnamese, Panamanian, Dominican, and so much more. Um, they are a part of the Multicultural Greek Council and they are part of their sophisticated Southern region. So national organizations sometimes break them down into regions. So that's the region they are a part of. So the impact their chapter has made. So they've helped run um, a shop for Susan G. Komen and volunteer at the large um, breast cancer races. They help at the Pink Promises Walk that happens on campus each October. They have breast cancer survivor pa survival panels and tributes. Um, their alumni, they do manicures for, um, they work or they help their alumni to do manicures for a cure for volunteers. They volunteer for that. Um, they have many breast cancer delegates, which I find is really interesting. I'll talk to you about delegates, but they raise funds to help with costs of treatment and things like that. Traditionally, they pick like a TWU student that is going through um, either breast cancer treatment or has just been through breast cancer treatment. And they basically fundraise for the whole year for this delegate um, to give money back for, so that they can um, pay for treatment and things that they need um, for care. They do many programs that promote self-care um, just as a whole, since you know we're all going through a lot, especially now. Um, they promote heart health in women during the month of February. And then they participate with um, Keep Ditton Beautiful and their Great American Cleanup, uh, Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service and other large um, days of service on campus. And that's a little bit about Sigma Lambda Gamma National Sorority Incorporated. So Nikki. Hi everyone, my name is Nikki Williston and I am Tri Sigma's chapter president. Okay. Thank you, Taylor. All right, just a little bit about us. We were founded at Longwood University in Farmville, Virginia on April 20th, 1898. Our flower is a purple violet, our colors are royal purple and white, our jewel is a pearl, and our symbol is a sailboat. So if you see a lot of pictures where we throw up our sailboats, that's why. Our philanthropy is the Tri Sigma Foundation. Within our foundation, we have Sigma Serves Children, uh, March of Dimes, and we also fund a play therapy room at Dallas Children's Medical Center. Our values are wisdom, faith, hope, love, and power. Our vision statement is Sigma, Sigma, Sigma will provide exceptional experiences that will empower women to change the world. Okay, sorority members that have made an impact. So I chose a national member. Her name is Melissa Kolb. Um, she is actually the person who educates all of our other chapters within the United States and Canada. So she educates our members on real world problems and helps guide members on being the best leaders that they can possibly be. I chose her as an impactful leader because she has created many symposiums for our members to be educated on, especially with real world problems that are going on in today's world. And then I chose a local member. She is actually an alumni in our Dallas chapter. Her name is Sherry DeVille. And she is actually the founder of one of our scholarships. So we're really excited about that. And she also holds the highest um, degree that you can get within Sigma, which is a golden violet. Okay, our overall history of Tri Sigma at TWU. 
So our Ada Kappa chapter at Sigma 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 was founded at TWU on April 1st, 2000 by 13 amazing women. Since our installation, Ada Kappa has initiated over 200 women within our sisterhood. Our chapter works hard to establish relationships on and off the TWU campus. Our members support other organizations by attending events and socials with them. Um, I had photos, but I don't know what happened to them. Um, but I know we've done uh, Beth Marie's and we've also done uh, socials with AOPI in the past. And so we just continue to have those organizations, uh, not just within the Greek community, but also expanding on that. Um, as for why we love Tri Sigma, we feel it offers valuable leadership and personal development experiences throughout the life of a member. All our programs are based on our fundamental mission of establishing a perpetual bond of friendship, developing strong womanly character and impressing a high standard of conduct. It is our belief that today's society needs strong women leaders. We offer the following to give our chapter officers and members an opportunity to learn and practice leadership skills. Okay, as for our impact on community, as I mentioned before, our philanthropy is in partnership with Sigma Serves Children and March of Dimes, and we also fund the play therapy rooms. Uh, our philanthropic initiative is to benefit children's health. We raise money to support play therapy rooms across the country, not just within our community. We believe that we can impact a child's life and every child deserves to get the treatment that they need. The March of Dimes has led the way to discover the genetic causes of birth defects to promote newborn screening and to educate medical professionals and the public about like the best practices for a healthy pregnancy. Uh, we also have members within our organization who were premature, so they really connect with our philanthropy and can speak more about it as they have been firsthand witnesses to that experience. Um, we also support research for therapy to treat respiratory distress and help initiate, initiate the system of regional neonatal insensitive care for premature and sick babies. As of 2003, the fight to save babies has been strongly characterized by the prematurity campaign. The rising incidence of premature birth has demanded action and the March of Dimes has responded by initiating an incentive multi-year campaign. This helps raise awareness and find the causes for prematurity. Uh, there's a lot more information on the March of Dimes partnership page, but they do help us, like, help us out a lot and we do a lot of 5Ks with them. Continuing the impact on our community. So I listed a lot of um, other organizations that we have been in partnership with, like HANDS, Order of Omega, Pioneer Ambassadors, Child Abuse Preven Prevention Society, Kinesiology Club, National Society of Leadership and Success, G-Force, National Society of Collegiate Scholars, and many more. We strive to represent ourselves well on campus and show how proud we are to be TWU pioneers. Also, Tri Sigma members need 30 hours of volunteering every year. And since we have those volunteering, we try to expand on not just with other organizations within Greek life, we also wanna do it with other TW organizations. So I know um, SCEC, we've also done things with them in the past uh, to try to get our volunteer hours. We also host an annual princess tea and a 5K in the fall. Uh, which has helped us raise over $2,000 for our philanthropic. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you. Did you. Yeah. Alma, did you wanna? No, that one should be right, but thank you guys for coming um, and being a part of it. Of course, follow us on TW Greek Live um, to see more events. And then every chapter has their own um, chapter specific uh, social media accounts. So please, um, if you're interested in reaching out to them, please do to hear more information. Um, I have my email on the screen if you need any information further for that. But thank you for coming. And I hope you guys learned something new about someone you didn't, you know, a chapter you didn't know about before. So thank you.